subscribe into my face. Thought I'd do a little intro for this video. First off, you might notice there's a completely different environment around me. Um, I have an art room now. What used to be my bedroom slash art space has now become fully dedicated to just art and I have a different bedroom and I'm planning on making a completely different video all about decorating the art room so it'll be like an art room makeover video. I love those sort of videos so I thought it'd be nice to make one. Um, in this video I'm working on updating my little art business. I sell prints, stickers, um, I, I have a pin, <laughs> a singular pin and now I, I sell washi tape my first ever washi tape so um, I show little bits of that of me getting everything ready for the update and it's now live if you press the link in the description it will take you straight to my Etsy page and you can see all the things I show in this video and there's, there's lots more things as well so it's worth checking out if you're interested in buying anything in this video I make a new thank you note I make lots of um, cute little felted bees and I do lots of prep for the shop update like making prints, doing listings, all that stuff so I hope you enjoy. Starting off this video with a little bit of painting, I decided to just have a painting session, not really with any intentions of making these guys into a thank you note, but as I was doing it, I realised, oh, these guys would actually be pretty perfect for a thank you note. Not that I, I didn't like my old one, my old one's nice, it gets the job done, but I'm just ready for a change, I'm sick of seeing it to be honest. Um, and I thought these mice would be perfect for a thank you note, I love them so much. I do have two mouse new mouse stickers in my shop now and I'm testing the waters to see how they sell because I'd love to make more designs, like imagine that little trumpet playing mouse as a sticker, but I know that my collage is what's most popular so I don't really know if the mice will do as well because obviously they're painted and not collaged. Anyway, in this video I'm working on getting everything ready for the update. It's been a long time coming, it seems like I've been saying for months now, oh the update's just around the corner, I'm getting working on the update, should be ready soon, and I was saying that like months ago. It's just because I've been trying to juggle so many different things whilst I've been trying to get everything organised, like commissions and like sponsorships and completely redecorating like free rooms in my house. It's taken me a long time to get round to this update, I can't quite believe it's finally happened. <laughs> Hopefully it goes well because it's a lot of work to put into something like weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks worth of work when you like round it all together like to make the art, to get the art ready to turn into prints, to do the listings, all the photos, all the promo, just figuring out what to turn into products like it's a, a lot of work goes into figuring out um, an update. I have changed the URL to my Etsy page uh, it's a lot shorter and more streamlined and that's thanks to this video's sponsor, Linkstore, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about them now. Linkstore is a tool which allows you to create a free branded link for your existing marketplace storefront. So what does this actually mean? It means instead of sharing a long complicated link to your store, you can share a much shorter one which is super easy to remember. This is how it helped with my own Etsy store. Before, this is what my link was. https colon slash slash www.etsy.com slash uk slash shop slash at revenge shop. <laughs> Too many words. It's fair to say it's not a link anyone could realistically remember. Now, after using Linkstore, my link is www.artwithm.com store. This is much more practical to use and will auto forward my potential customers directly to my Etsy storefront. And let's face it, this link looks more professional and trustworthy to click on. You can get a marketplace link for any of your marketplace storefronts such as Etsy, Amazon, Facebook and Instagram. Using a branded link allows you to build a more memorable brand making it easier for customers to remember your store. As well as this, branded links get 48% more clicks than a marketplace link bringing more customers to your store. Getting a branded link couldn't be easier. I was able to set mine up in a matter of minutes simply go to www.link.store, enter your current marketplace link, then type in what you'd like your new one to be. Before you know it, Linkstore has worked the magic and you now have a professional streamlined link which is ready to be shared with the world. You can share it on all customer touch points to create a cohesive 
band identity. I'm already sharing mine in my video descriptions and on my social medias and I'm planning on adding it to my current business card design to make it easier for people to find my Etsy store. Having a branded link is free for the first six months and no credit required. It really is a no-brainer for any marketplace seller and I couldn't recommend it enough. You have just seen me painting slash drawing this little thing and the reason I'm doing this is for a new thank you note for my shop. Let me show you the thank you note I currently have is very different and looks like this and it's cute, I like it but I've had it for a while and I think it's ready for a change. I'll show you the sketches that I did for it. So it's going to look like that in the end. So just a little mice walking along the bottom and then just a simple thank you on top. Um, I need to write thank you. I've not really figured out how I'm going to do that. I feel like I'm probably going to end up doing it to look like how I write my name on my website. I'll probably just write thank you like that. After I did all those sketches, I took pictures of my favourite ones. Um, and then it was just a case of like... Picking the best, trying to find the best that kind of matched. If I get rid of that, you can see just that. So I was swapping out loads of different mice until I got the, the perfect bunch. And then I just added on some colour, like really loosely. If I take the lines away, it looks like that. Oh no. Oh no. Just doing it with my mouse. Oh no, that looks horrible. But it gives you an idea. I have this lovely little guy who just hangs here on my shelf. I made it for my book hotel project. That thing there, the little hotel that the insects live inside. I added on this little hangy thing here, if I can get my finger for it. There we go. And he dangles from my shelf. I really like him. The reason I'm showing you this is because I'm going to make some more. I want to make some felted insects for my shop update just to see how they sell because I've got so much felt that I bought for this project and I want to use it up and I am obsessed with this guy and I hope that other people will like him too. I also have I also have a ladybird um, as well. I really like this guy too but I feel like the bee would be more popular. I just want to see how long it takes me to make so I can figure out how to price them because if they take me ages to make I have to like factor that into the price. I'll do a different string to hang it because this looks a bit you know not the most professional bit of string. I use nicer string. I don't think I quite realised how much work I was giving myself with these bees. I made eight in the end and they just seem to be taking me forever to make. I guess they've taken me around two hours each to make. Um, the actual felting process takes around um, and around an hour, maybe a little bit longer, um, but I reckon I could streamline that and get that quicker if I bought, because I know you can buy needles, like needle felting needles with multiple needles, <laughs> I don't know if that made sense, basically like it's a thing which has multiple needles so every time you press it does lots of stabs instead of just one, so I reckon that would really speed things up, because I love these guys and if they're popular I'd love to carry on making them, but I, it's, I need to figure out a way to make them that's more sustainable is that the right word basically a, a way to make them that doesn't take me that long because I can't dedicate that much of my time to making little felted insects and also like realistically for the time I've put in I should be selling them for like I don't know at least 20 pound each but I don't want to sell them for that much so it's just a balancing act I need to find a way to make them quicker so that I can sell them for a price that I feel comfortable at because I don't really feel comfortable selling them for 20 pounds so that's why I'm not 
I still need to figure out a price though. Anyway, that's my little ramble on the bees. Here I am unboxing some prints. I am making the majority of my prints myself on my printer that I have, but I have um, outsourced my postcards just to help me with like the time it would take to print everything. And also postcards are usually that are typically printed on a thicker paper. And for me to print on paper that thick, it would cost just too much. The paper just costs too much. And it's really hard to find paper that thick to print on. So I decided to just outsource the postcards for everything else I'm making myself. I, I accidentally bought them on the wrong type of paper, um, so the paper is shinier than usual, um, but there's nothing like wrong with that, just personal preference. Beware, be warned, the paper is different to my usual postcard paper, it has like a glossiness to it. But yeah, that's, that's, that's what that was. <laughs> just realized that I never showed you my tape. I showed myself working on this tape a few videos ago now. I'll show you the original artwork that I used. This is the first ever washi tape that I've ever done. I've been wanting to do tape for ages and finally like took the plunge this time. I did loads of these twisty vines for my book hotel project and then when I was trying to come up with washi tape designs I was like well this would just be perfect. So I spent ages, like hours, re editing those to fit the very long strip of a washi tape. Here they all are, they took about a month from like me sending it off to getting them. This is one that's been unwrapped. Um, I'll show you it actually stuck down because it looks so much different. So much more different, More. it looks much more, it looks a lot different. Um, obviously because it's see-through you can kind of see the layers underneath. Anyway this is it stuck to the sheet of paper. I'm so pleased with how it turned out, oh I guess it's that way up. The repattern goes a lot longer before it repeats. Let me try and show you. I mean, I don't want to like, I'm getting really precious about this tape. I don't want to, because this is my roll, but I don't want to really use it that much. Um, so let's see how far I can go before it starts to repeat. Um, okay, there we are. That's how long a section is before it starts to repeat. I mean, there are similarities, um, like the B repeats again, but it's flipped. The ladybird repeats again, but that's flipped. So you get a lot of pattern there before it, you know, repeats. I'll try and wrap it up really neat now. I don't want to waste any. I also completely forgot to show you the new stickers I bought for this update. So I've got two new mice and two new insects of being a butterfly. <laughs> Um, so I'm printing all the things that I'm going to be printing. You'll be able to hear the printer whirring off in the distance. Um, I've got it printing this design at the moment. I'm kind of just guessing how many to print of each. I'm not going too mad at the moment. The most I'm going to print of anything is 10. Uh, I'm just kind of trying to guess what will be popular. I imagine, well, this is really popular. Um, so I've printed loads of them. I imagine this will be popular because it's very similar you know, seas, boats, collage. So I printed 10 of them. Um, and then, oh, I imagine this will be popular as well. People like the seaside and boats. The ones that I don't think will be popular, I'll just do like one or two of. I'm also making the little corners. So whenever I pack an order, I make these little corners, which look like this, and they go on the edge, well, on the corners to protect the prints. Yeah, and ever since I've been doing these corners, I've never had a single complaint of a print coming damaged, so that's pretty good. Although they are a real faff to make. I cut paper into strips. I have so much scrap paper that I've saved um, for corners, like a giant wad of it. And then they get folded around the corner of something pointy to make this. I put a little bit of masking tape on and then they get cut to size to be like this. Um, so it's quite fiddly and each order takes four corners so they go down pretty quickly as well so it just seems like you're always having to make more corners. Although my dad makes a lot of them for me so that's helpful. Anyway so I'm having a big corner making session whilst I'm printing. Oscar's hanging out with me. He's doing something completely different. What are you doing Oscar? Statistical mechanics, whoa. This is how the prints are looking. It's not the best lighting. Let me try and get them under this. 
uh, I'll do nicer shots of them later on in the garden on a sunny day. This is what Oscar does. Does anybody understand? <laughs> I'm gonna get back round to my bees. I've tried to give them all little spiral butts. There you go, I think they're really cute. I think they're actually better than the original one I did. I've gotten a lot neater. I will go through with a tiny pair of scissors and cut away all the little flyaways. So what I'm gonna do now is I just use a little bit of string. Well, wool I suppose it's called. Um, and you can just felt it straight in. I need to make tiny little heads. I make them out of clay. Um, we can see here. It's made out of clay, I paint it and then I paint tiny little eyes. So that's what I'm going to work on this evening, although I won't be able to get around to assembling them all because the air dry clay will take about uh, a day to dry, so I'll do them all in the morning tomorrow. Dancing to the to the music. <laughs> I don't know how short to cut them. I'll do it like cutting a fringe. I'll do a little, little at a time because you can't add more, but you can take more. Thank you cards have arrived the ones you saw me working on at the start of this video them guys um ended up just ordering them from my usual print place um and then i'm just trimming them down myself because that way it's like the cheapest the cheapest way to do it is basically this way basically because i give these out for free i don't really want to spend that much money on them and i also outsource just because of the sheer volume of them that I go through. I decided to just order them because it would take me ages to print this many thank you notes. And plus the paper I use for my prints is a much nicer quality and I don't wanna like waste really nice quality paper and stuff I'm giving out for free. This is my little bee gang over here that doing like a little conga line. You might notice they're currently headless. <laughs> I've made the heads last night. I just use a little bit of air dry clay, wiggle them into a little kind of semicircle shape. Okay, I'm gonna show you a screen recording right now and I'm also talking at the same time. I'm moving my mouse whilst I talk. I've spent the last two days staring deep into my computer screen, editing pictures and getting listings ready for the shop update. So I thought I'd just do a quick screen record to show you everything that I've done. So here are all the product pictures. 
what I did, which might be obvious, or it might, hopefully it's not obvious, is I take a picture of just a blank sheet of paper in a bunch of different like positions. Luckily, I had access to quite a nice patch of flowers. <laughs> um, so I just took loads of pictures in front of this flower patch with this blank sheet of paper, and then I edit the print on top. It makes it so much easier to edit and quicker. I mean, you might be able to tell that I'm not actually holding this <laughs> and this is edited on top, but I feel like I've, I've done the best job I could. The reason I don't take pictures of the actual print is because that is a lot of tweaking and editing to get the picture of the print to look like the actual print because it never will and there'll be like glare and uh, all this stuff so it's just easier to take a picture of a blank sheet of paper and edit the print on top. Anyway, I'll quickly flick for all the pictures I've edited. You can also see some of the um, sticker pictures as well. For the sticker pictures I just did some put some yellow gingham fabric down. I took these pictures on a very grey, rainy day so there was no chance I could go outside to, you know, take pretty pictures in front of flowers. Um, and you know, I've got a pretty tight deadline to get this shop update done for the day I want it to be on so far. I'll just take them inside with some gingham in the background. It gets the job done. I think it's pretty cute. Anyway, so there's a few of each print, some close-ups and different angles. Um, oh, I really like the way these, actually looking at these now, these could do a little bit more saturated maybe. I might up the saturation on these washi tape pictures, but I did a cute little photo shoot of that. I've never taken pictures of washi tape before, so I didn't really know how to do it, but I just um, looked at how other people did it and kind of copied them to be honest. Um, but I think that looks really cute. More product pictures. I think there's 49 pictures in total, so that's everything I edited. There's also going to be a few videos for the sticker listings. I do videos um, to show like the shininess of the sticker. Um, anyway, so I need to start those videos out. I have taken the videos, I just need to edit them in. And then here's my e the behind the scenes of Etsy. Um, these are all my currently active listings and drafts. So these are all the ones that I, I for the shop update, ready to go up. Um, there you go, I mean, that's it. There's <laughs> not much else to show, really. So on the day of the shop update, I'm gonna tick all these boxes and then I'll press, you know, uh, publish. And it's as simple as that. There you go, I think that's a pretty cute picture of them. I'm gonna add a video in for the B as well because I feel like pictures don't really do it justice. Anyway, I'm rambling at this point. You get the idea, that's what I've been doing for the past few days. And I think at this point, we're probably at the end of the video. Pop a little montage up again of all the things I, I sell. Well, I sell a lot more prints than this, um, but this is all the stuff I filmed for this. Um, but if you like the look of anything in this video, I really appreciate if you go and have a look at my Etsy shop. Even just favoriting an item really helps out. Out. Honestly, it means the world to me when someone orders from my shop. I've just finished uni and I'm now trying to be an illustrator and it's, it's you know, it's a long road, you know, so any help really does mean a lot to me. There you go, that's my, that's my plea. <laughs> Please buy something. No, only buy something if you like it and you have the money. <laughs> <laughs> any any little just watching my videos and all that and very liking things and leaving comments is more than enough support um anyway having said all that i hope you've enjoyed this video i will be doing a art room uh makeover video next really looking forward to editing that don't forget to check out linkstore as well the sponsor of this video they they are good <laughs> they're good and nice <laughs> um yeah i'll see you soon bye